1976, Mike Jensen and William Meckling published a paper that is possibly the most important business paper of all time. That paper has been cited more than 100,000 times since being published. As a point of reference, more than 100,000 citations is generally reserved for the greatest minds in the entire history of science. The list of people with more than 100,000 citations includes people like Einstein, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, and Adam Smith, the founder of economics. Why was this paper so important? Well, stick around and I'll explain it to you. Theory of the firm, managerial behavior, agency costs, and ownership structure is the name of the paper that Jensen and Meckling published in the Journal of Financial Economics back in 1976. It is such an important paper because it brings the idea of agency theory to the forefront of business research. Agency theory essentially says that principals hire agents to work for them. In this case, the principals are the shareholders in a company and the agents are the firm managers. However, unfortunately, the two groups have misaligned goals, objectives, and most importantly, incentive structures. Consider, for example, what each group wants with respect to the riskiness of the firm. Because owners can diversify away any unwanted idiosyncratic risk, leaving them with just the systematic risk, investors want managers to be aggressive in running the business. If something terrible happens, the owners will just lose a fraction of their total investment portfolio and they'll move on with life. Owners want their agents to take calculated chances and to push for growth and results at a very high level. Compare that with the motivation of managers. The managers in that firm cannot diversify away their exposure to the company because their paycheck, benefits, and potentially personal identity are all tied up in the company for whom they work. If the company struggles, that financial problem may result in a very difficult situation for the managers of the firm. They are left exposed to both the idiosyncratic and the systematic risk of the company. From the very beginning, the two parties have different risk exposures and want different outcomes. We can extend this type of logic to include ideas like rent extraction or taking advantage of perquisite compensation. Once upon a time, I worked for a company where I was the financial controller. Part of the job of a financial controller is to manage cost. The owners of the business surely wanted me to spend as little as possible while achieving their desired outcomes. At some point, I went to Asia on an audit trip. I was faced with a dilemma. Should I fly business class, arrive refreshed and ready for work, and maybe even enjoy the trip a little bit more? Or should I fly coach and save $5,000 on the difference in ticket prices? This is a perfect example of the principal agent problem. Managers might also try to extract rents, either by trying to increase their pay or their benefits, or otherwise gain a financial benefit that is not precipitated by an increase in value creation on their part. If you think about it, you will quickly realize that most employees face the tension of doing what is best for themselves or what is best for the shareholders, literally every day in a variety of ways. You can see this principal agent issue is big, and it goes very far in explaining many behaviors by workers and managers, and as such, it is one of the most important theories in the history of business. And what's that? Oh, you want to know if I flew business class or coach? Well, there were a team of four of us that traveled together. The other three went business class. I flew coach. The next day, I was nearly worthless, and they were all in better shape than I was. So who made the right decision? It leaves me wondering if it was worth paying $5,000 more just to be in better shape for one extra day on the trip or not. 